So you wanted them to sign a veteran wide receiver? Well, the Baltimore Ravens have signed a veteran wide receiver. We're about to break down exactly what this means, all the possibilities that it could bring, and everything that you need to know about their latest move. Before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. It only takes like half a second to do it. And also subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications all the way on so you do not miss not a single update on our team. So looking at this article on BaltimoreRavens.com, it said the Ravens have signed wide receiver Keith Kirkwood. Somebody said that, that sounded like a country singer. But anyway, adding a veteran to the competition mix after he participated in Ravens minicamp on a tryout basis. So Keith Kirkwood came through the minicamp, and Ravens said, okay, we like what we see. We'll give you a call. We'll stay in touch. And they stayed in touch, and now they have brought him back a couple of weeks later, just in time for training camp to start in a little less than a month. Uh, but this part right here, in that same paragraph in the article, it says, adding a veteran to the competition mix. Hmm. When I think about that, where exactly would Keith Kirkwood be competing at? What spot would he be competing for? Because when you think about the Baltimore Ravens roster at the wide receiver position, Rashad Bateman, lock. Zay Flowers, lock. Nelson Aguilar, lock. Tez Walker, lock. Tylen Wallace, Deontay Hardy, not necessarily locks, but those guys are more than likely to make the roster, especially with all the kickoff rule changes because a lot of teams are using two kick returners instead of just primarily featuring one. But we'll see what happens. At. But as far as him competing for a spot, I think the spot where he's most likely to be competing for would be probably on the practice squad, just to really try to get an opportunity to land with a team. Because you see, with the Baltimore Ravens, and really just football in general, but with the Baltimore Ravens right now, training camp is right around the corner. So while he's not guaranteed a spot at all, just having that much more competition, having that much more competition in the building, it can help push everybody that much harder. Because while the guys who are going to make the roster, their spots are pretty much determined already, there's still a lot of guys pushing to try to knock somebody out of that last roster spot and also for the practice squad, too. So him being thrown in the mix, that just makes everybody at the, in the wide receiver room go that much harder and be pushed that much more. But let's continue with the article. It says, Kirkwood is entering his seventh season. So now we get a background on, on uh, Keith Kirkwood. It says he's caught 24 passes for 294 yards and one, two, three touchdowns over his career. Spread between the New Orleans Saints in 2018 and 2019, and 2022 and 2023, and he played for the Carolina Panthers as well in 2020 and 2021. So, he's over there. He used to the NFC South. He ain't used to the AFC North. So, this will be a, a, a brand new environment and situation for him, and we'll see how he adjusts. Now, the six foot three Kirkwood, so that's, that's a giant right there. He's tall. That's probably... It, it, one of the tallest receivers on the team right now. If not the tallest when I think about it. Cause we got Rashad Baby, he like 6'1". We got Zay Flowers, he like 5'10". We got Nelson Aguilar, he like 5'11", 6 foot. Uh, Tez Walker, what Tez Walker, like 6'1", six, 6'2"? Six, six, I might have messed up his height though. But um, yeah, I think Kirkwood might be one of the taller ones for sure. But anyway, continuing. The 6'3", Kirkwood played in a career high 13 games last season in New Orleans. So he was out there a lot. And he says he made four starts. He caught nine passes for 37 yards and one touchdown. Okay. Okay. He says Kirkwood was originally undrafted out of Temple in 2018. And the Ravens waived undrafted rookie wide receiver Tavion Robinson on Wednesday. Ah, and that... I guess it makes sense now because we were wondering, like, what were they going to do with that spot where when they waved Tavian Robinson? Who are they going to add? Is it going to be somebody named Justin? Is it going to be somebody named Jamal? But it ended up being key, so he ended up taking that spot. Said Baltimore is now at the 91-man roster limit with outside linebacker David Ajabo, he, who we actually got to talk about shortly, uh, counting as an international exemption. So with Keith Kirkwood. Yeah, he's thrown into the mix, and we'll see exactly where he lands at. Now, speaking of David Ajabo, I was reading late for work on BaltimoreRavens.com earlier today, and a part of it said why David Ajabo is Ravens' X Factor at outside linebacker. And it really got me to thinking, but let me read what I read so we could talk about it. It said, Jadavian Clowney's departure in free agency has raised some concerns about the Ravens' outside linebacker core. One player who could ease that concern is David Ajabo. See, when they said that, they had all, in the next paragraph, they wrote exactly what I was thinking. And they said, because of Ajabo's combination of vast potential, yet when we seen him, that boy been balling. That boy can't rush that passer, but we ain't seen him too much because of 
Then it said, because of his uh, combination of vast potential and injury issues, he is the Ravens' X factor at the position, according to the Baltimore banners, Paul Mancano and Jonas Schaefer. So he has such an interesting and frustrating combination of attributes because when he's been on the field, he's going to get to that quarterback. Like, he showed that in his rookie year. He showed it the last year, too. He, when he plays, he is guaranteed to get to that quarterback. But he just ain't played. So I can see why they would say David Ajabo is certainly an X factor because while they did bring in uh, or bring, bring back Kyle Vinoy, which I did like that move a lot, uh, they got Tavius Robinson in his second year. So we'll see what he can do with possibly more playing time. You got Adafi away, and he's, for the most part, he's been healthy. He did miss a little chunk of games last year, but for the most part, he's been pretty healthy. But we're still waiting on him to turn that corner. But So you, you got a lot of question marks there. And they also drafted uh, Adisa Isaac, and he had, did have some hamstring issues in, like, minicamp and whatnot. Hopefully those are a thing of the past and they don't end up being a reoccurring thing because, you know, with hammies, they can be very, very tricky and finicky. But we have more questions, in my opinion, than answers right now at Pass Rush. This is why there was a recent article that talked about, there was actually a couple of articles that talked about how the Baltimore Ravens, they should actually trade for Matt Judon, bring him back home. Especially with the Patriots, they in super rebuild mode right now. And with Matt Judon, he could come back home. He's already established himself as a consistent pass rusher. We know last year he dealt with injuries off and on, but... They could bring him home and they could have that veteran pass rusher who you know is going to show up, who you know can produce. Because what's crazy about Matt Judon, think about this. With Matt Judon, remember his last couple of years with the Baltimore Ravens, he was producing, getting sacks and stuff, and he was not in Mike McDonald's system. He, he left while I believe we still had Wink, I think, in, in Matt Judon's last uh, year, I believe. But he ain't, he ain't make it to Mike McDonald's system. And while we don't have Mike McDonald's system right now, I expect us to have a version of it with Zachary Orr taking over as defensive coordinator. So with that being said, if we could get somebody like a Matt Judon, or you know what, before, before we even talk about that, if David Ajabo can stay healthy, oof, amazing. That would be great. And I know they can't necessarily bank on that. You can't count on that because of what recent history has shown you. But if he can surprise us, it will be a great surprise. And I'm sure he will be happy for it, too. We would all be happy for it if he could stay healthy because we know that boy can play. We know he can ball. But if he can stay healthy, man, that will make this unit that much better. Because you think about it. Think about all the contribution that the Baltimore Ravens got from the pass rush positions last year. Like outside linebacker, defensive end. You look at guys like Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Vannoy. But then they got it from other areas too. It's like when you got more than one way that you can get it, that makes it even sweeter. Because, of course, Super Duper Kyle, he would turn into a pass rusher. They had Marlon Humphrey blitzing sometime. Early on in the season, they had Ardarius Washington. He was blitzing the pass. So they get it in Arthur Millette, too. So they get it in so many different ways. But when you can get it from your base defense, when you ain't got to send this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, you can get it from your outside linebackers, that makes the job that much better. What are the Baltimore Ravens' odds to make the playoffs this year? Well, according to this list from PFF, they say the Baltimore Ravens have a 67% chance of making the playoffs out of the AFC this year. Now, this was the odds to make the playoffs uh, on the AFC side. It said the Chiefs have a 76% chance. Uh, the Ravens have 67%. The Bills at 61. The Bengals at 59. The Texans at 52. The Dolphins at 52 as well. And the Jets at 48 percent so they're putting us pretty high and i i don't see any issues with that i don't think this is anything outrageous or crazy or outstanding or anything like that i mean it's just they know who the baltimore ravens are they know how the baltimore ravens get down especially if healthy and if the ravens are healthy like look they're gonna make the playoffs but the bigger question is what they do once they get there